Well, thank you, everybody with uh, that's uh, joined in. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to go just go through, a, you know, a brief introduction of myself and, and the company that I am representing. My name is Andy Brisley, and just a bit about me. I've been a supply chain practitioner and, and technologist going on 40 years. And throughout my career, I've gone through many different roles, many different management levels, up to vice president and vice president of materials, director of materials, uh, been involved in many, many different technology selections and implementations and have participated in using those different technologies and solutions. And why we are in an incredibly difficult and unknown time, what we'd like to talk about and what this series is really designed for is to just continue to start the conversation with different people. So with that, a little bit about the company that uh, I am representing, uh, Axolytics. And really Axolytics is the premier boutique supply chain and consulting and implementation uh, partner representing Anaplan Solutions. And our mission really is to help our customers improve what they're doing, how they're doing it, and just making their lives easier. We have found that using the connected planning solution and our uh, implementation and advisory services has really helped a lot of different companies along that connected planning journey. So as we go through this, and again, I stated earlier, we are definitely in unprecedented times. And the recovery is gonna be filled with starts and stops, whether it's changes as geographies comes online, maybe workforce impacts, whether people will be coming back to work, won't they be coming back to work? How are you going to take that into consideration? The markets that you're serving may be impact and maybe even possibly the products that you're serving them with. And the objectives of these sessions that we're holding every Thursday is to discuss some of these areas where companies can take action now to help them in this recovery, in this rebound. And you know, if you're going to have to replan some of your uh, solutions, if you're going to have to re-image your supply chain, what is the best way to do it and how are you going to utilize decision support to help you make those business decisions? So in last week's sessions, we talked about how segmentation can help you concentrate on meaningful targets for the existing markets that you may be serving. And today, what we're going to be talking about is scenario planning. So what, what I'll do is I'll go through and I will uh, talk a little bit. I've got a small presentation and then I'm just gonna open it up to questions and you can put your questions in the chat area and we'll just continue to answer the questions as we go along. But I'd like to just finish the brief overview and then go on. And again, the goal of this is to understand A, what can we do now? How can we do it? Can we do it with existing technology? And what is the outcome? What is the expected outcome? And what are the challenges that you may, may be facing? So having said all of that, let's go ahead and just kick it off with what uh, today's session is. And that is just a review of scenario planning. Now scenario planning, you know, at the highest level, it's just taking a bunch of different levers, if you will, and adjusting them and seeing what that output is. What is that output in the different capacities, the different financial impacts, et cetera, whether you're using different sets of data, whether you're using a consistent set of data, are you using syndicated data? All of those different types of information are going to be available for you. And sometimes that can be the challenge is finding the right tool to house all of that data. But let's just start with the different types of scenario planning. And of course, there's gonna be the tactical scenarios as well as strategic scenario plannings. And so when you start thinking about that and whether you are going to be doing tactical or strategic, one of the things that I have found that has been very helpful is making sure that the levers that you're adjusting and changing that you can impact those levers within the time fence that you're targeting. 
And so from a tactical standpoint, if I increase, maybe I have a very, very labor intensive process and I can bring on labor or I can reduce labor as my market demands, that's something that you can change very, very quickly. Or maybe you have some alternate resources that you have online that can be utilized and you can bring those up and down. Pricing is another thing that companies have control over that they can change quickly and they can look and those are the different levels in a tactical area, in a promotion. Um, some of the things for strategic scenarios that you may want to think about. Uh, am I going to go serve a new market, be it a geography or a different industry? How would I enter that market? Who are the different competitors? Am I looking at new customer acquisitions? What are the different industries, et cetera? And if you think about uh, going back to the Six Sigma world, if you think to MAIC, and basically when you're doing the scenarios, look at just using that process of define the scenario, continue to measure the scenario, analyze the output, and see what are the tactical areas that you can improve within that scenario, and then start implementing and controlling those scenarios. And one of the things that I think is really, really important that some companies may review, may overlook, is that scenarios just shouldn't be an emergency action. That shouldn't, you know, you can take these scenario plannings and make it part of whether you have a, a monthly, weekly SNOP process, a management process, a quarterly review. Scenario plans should be utilized in each and every one of those steps. And it just isn't an emergency action. Just because you have a disruptive influence today, make sure that you're utilizing either the tactical or the strategic scenarios and the data that's available to help you in your decision support. Now, scenario planning is gonna be different from each industry that we, we end up going through, whether it's retail, automotive, CPG, industrial, and some of the different details that you're going to be looking at for the different uh, scenarios is what are my stocking levels? Do I need to increase my stocking level? And if I increase that stocking level in my first scenario, should I increase it aggressively, conservatively, or maybe just mid-road? Within that, I can just uh, see what the financial impact of carrying those stocking levels. Do I have different service levels that I have to maintain? Am I going to get a charge back in retail industries? Are there regulatory concerns, roadblocks, issues that I have to overcome before I can even uh, enter those industries as well as compliance issues and even uh, information along shelf lives? So all of those things will have an impact uh, and, and will be dependent on what industry you're in. And so one of the first things you wanna do is again, to find those levers within the strategic and tactical area. Some of the things to look at are costs and overheads, but again, making sure that you have control over those. Some of the long-term costs may be baked in for some time, but maybe some of the overheads, some of the labor, some of those type of things may be uh, within your time, uh, time fence that you can go ahead and change. Uh, take a look at your product lines from a strategic area. Is my product line, and this will kind of builds on the segmentation that we talked about before, is that product line getting and gaining the market share that we were looking at? How can I change my product line? Is it a packaging deal? A lot of times in CPG, I might just look at different packaging. Is it a buy one, get one? How do I go ahead and look at those different scenarios, bake those into my financial as well as supply chain plan and see what the output of that is. Today, what's really gonna be important is the whole idea of geographic impact. As different areas of the country, of the world come online and serving different portions of the, uh, the economy at this point. Um, you know, cars are gonna be lagging behind, but service isn't. Service for cars isn't. So the spare parts and the repair parts, that's one thing, but new cars are gonna be struggling for a little bit. Retail outlets, some of them are wide open. Some of them have been critical, uh, deemed critical. Groceries, those type of things. But others, the small boutique retail, 
people. And if you're doing uh, packaged goods that are serving that, in some geographies, that's getting ready to open tomorrow. In other geographies, it may not be open until mid-month and still even longer after that. And from a tactical standpoint, again, we talked about, am I going to look at different pricing? Am I going to do different promotions and try and incent uh, my, my buyer, or excuse me, my, my salespeople to try and push things into different markets, to try and push things into different customers and geographies. And again, looking at all those different scenarios from the top line to the bottom line, uh, growth, what is the cost, what is the revenue impact, but in most importantly, taking a look at that in a connected manner in the different scenarios that you want to look at. Once you have defined those different data sets, et cetera, then you can go ahead and start looking and building the different models. Now, Anaplan is a great modeling tool. Right, Anaplan is an, a wonderful modeling tool. Some companies are still struggling with Excel, but I I'd, I'd challenge you to take a look at these different modeling tools that are out there and available. So one of the things that we just talked about is gathering the leather, the uh, levers, understand the stratifications that we are talking about. Where am I going to be concentrating on when I talk about stratification, whether it's uh, within my company, whether you know what is the bounds of my uh, actual scenario? Am I going to look at the entire supply chain? Those different type of things. Being able to map that data, putting in the different change control processes, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but also including the structured and unstructured data elements and syndicated and industrial projections taking all of that information into consideration, you know, at the end of the day, all models, it's, it's like a forecast, all models are wrong, but boy, can they give you great information and they can give you direction. No model is gonna be perfect, but boy, without a model, you're kind of flying blind. And that's why we're saying use this modeling capability and adjust those different scenario plans. Being able to do this in a meeting, being able to do it live with different people, participating in at different management levels. And again, the data elements that you're looking at, total cost, pricing considerations, customer segmentation, who is my most important customer? Should I be exiting a different customer segment? Should I serve this customer more importantly? Even with a product that may not be profitable, but because they are a customer of high importance and they are asking for this, what are those different scenarios that I want to look at? How can I impact that? And then you're not just making guesses, you're using data to help you with your decision support. And then there's the fact of known risks. What are your known risks? Whether it be shelf life is typically a known risk, whether there's anticipated risk coming through. And some of those things may be included in the, um, you know, the anticipated risks may be a rebound of COVID. What it, how do you build all of that data into that so you can consider and look at the different uh, scenarios? And so at the end of the day, and I'm wrapping up my presentation and we'll open it up to questions here real quickly. We have to ensure proper alignment and actionable output because to build a scenario, first and foremost, Building scenarios is, does take time, but the value far outweighs the time that it takes to build. And using the right tools will really reduce the amount of time that it takes to go through and run through these different scenarios. But still, as an age old adage of you have to have an executive approval and, and participation because if you're not going to use these suggestions or if these scenarios aren't reviewed in some type of formal uh, situation, then the value of them decreases significantly, but more importantly, the effort that people are putting in is really wasted. And so make sure that you get the value that you're looking for out of doing the different scenarios. And we talked, or I talked a little bit about understanding the boundaries or the stratifications within the, the enterprise. And this kind of goes along with the breadth and depth of the scenario. Are we looking at just a single factory? Are we going to look at a division within 
my, uh, my enterprise. Some companies will even go through and include the entire supply chain for a particular enterprise or for a particular product line. And you will have to gather that data, understand what their stocking levels are, looking at what their delivery, uh, the supplier scorecards and those different types of things. How reliable and is the delivery and how reliable is the product? Are they being impacted? And so when you're going through and when we talk about alignment and then getting the actionable output, making sure that you're understanding the breadth and the depth of the scenario that you want to look at. So if you go through and you create all these different scenarios, but they're not actionable and you can't take uh, concrete steps based off that information, then again, you really haven't done a service to your company. The other side of this is the undue influence and bias. When people are building models, sometimes companies may start with a preconceived notion. And we really have to work hard to make sure that that is eliminated from taking the data in or just including or excluding data. And so some of the different steps that we can take is, you know, if we're in a divisional or enterprise leadership role, making sure again that it's the executive team is more than just the planning functions, that they're involved, that they understand what that different uh, pieces of information are, they agree to those pieces of information. And then that you also have a change control situation for that information, making sure that different information isn't all of a sudden just included and skews your model because that will lessen the validity of the model, that will call into question, um, you know, how accurate your assumptions are, etc. But again, we talked about, you know, the, the boundaries and Again, this will depend entirely on the industry and your corporation, but it may include entire supply chains from transportation to intraplant requirements. And again, understanding what that is and how that data, how all of that information is collected. And I just want to reemphasize when you're building your models, agree on the data sets, agree on a change control process in place to change or add additional data, subtract data, if that data isn't made being value or isn't uh, being considered. And at the end of the day, and these are all just kind of mom and apple pie things, but I see so many companies struggling with, uh, with the scenario planning. Make sure that we have an approval plan once they look at it. Once that plan has been approved, whether, you know, just taking uh, an aggressive conservative or midterm or midland type of approach that that plan is then approved and that communication is then passed down and the information can then be passed down to the execution systems and making sure that out of this entire scenario plan that we have um, valuable a valuable information that be that the plan is actionable and it can be part of your continuous process. And again, I think if we go back to the Six Sigma term of DMAIC of define, measure, analyze that information, start to improve the different scenario processes and then control the inputs and outputs. So that's you know scenario planning and probably a 15, 20 minute overview. I'd be happy to take any questions now at this point. Go ahead, Anna. Let me see, allow it. Go ahead, Anna. Hi, Andy, thanks so much for this information. This has been great. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, I'll ask the first one and then have you answer and then I'll go into the next one. But my first question is, I'm wondering if you could go into a bit more detail on tactical and strategic scenario um, and how often each of those should be run. Certainly. So, the, and again, I think the big difference between tactical and strategic is from a tactical standpoint, it's those things that are in my near term or immediate control is how I would look at tactical. From a cost perspective, labor perspective, what can I change now that is going to have an immediate financial impact 
or deliverable impact to my supply chain, to my bottom line, or to my top line. And I would say that immediate impact can be anywhere, can it be within a two week time frame, depending on your planning cycles, or can it be within maybe a three month time frame? From a strategic alignment standpoint, I would say, you know, the areas that people typically are looking at is there, I have new products, I have a new product pipeline. What is the demand for that? Am I going to be doing different, um, you know, is there going to be different cannibalization of current demand versus this demand? Is it going to impact my production facilities? Do I have to bring an entire new facility online? Another area around strategic scenarios would be where can I place new facilities from a strategic network optimization standpoint? Where can I place these new facilities? Where would the transportation costs be different? And then from a, a timing standpoint, from a tactical uh, information, I would say a tactical scenario planning should be done, A, if you're doing uh, sales and operations planning in um, monthly or weekly, whatever that I would say that those scenario plans should be done, those tactical plans should be done right along with that. Because that's where you can make those quick changes. So look at the different scenarios and the tactical as part of the sales and operations planning process. From the strategic standpoint, it's really, uh, a lot of it is probably, you know, take a look at those things minimally, um, biannually, probably more importantly on a quarterly basis, where am I going, am I measuring? And again, this gets to being able to measure, improve and control those different types of things. How, is the, how has the market changed? Am I still online? So hopefully that answered your question, Anna. Yeah, yeah, absolutely it did. Thanks, I appreciate it. Um, and then I just have one more question. Um, I was wondering if you could explain a bit more around um, change control of the data elements for input to the scenario plans um, and then why that's important. I, yeah, I, th I think this is one of the areas where I, people can start gathering data and, and trying to put in all of that data. And this is, you know, whether that data is in a data warehouse, whether it's coming from your ERP system, whether it's unstructured data, whether you have syndicated data, um, being able to understand, A, how often that data is updated, because doing a scenario plan with uh, data that hasn't been updated is, why would you bother? Why, if the data has changed drastically and you're using two month old, week old data, that scenario now becomes less, less valid and people start losing uh, control or not control, but um, you know, they, they start losing their confidence in the different scenarios. Now from a change control process, I think it's really important that you know, everybody understands and everybody in the entire planning from finance to supply chain, to IT, to sales, everybody has to understand and agree that these are the valid levers that I'm pulling on. These are the valid areas that I want to model differently in my scenarios. And this is how often I believe they should be changed. And then they have to go through, and if that were to change, because sometimes data becomes irrelevant, and sometimes there's new data elements that become available. So having that change control process can just be as easy as you know, uh, in the sales and operations planning or whenever you're doing these things, just bringing that up in a, whether it's an email or whether you have different engineering change control processes, whatever the uh, process is, but getting everybody to agree on that is, is of critical importance because again, if they're not confident in that you're modeling the right data, they're gonna lose confidence in the model and the validity of it becomes less and less important. Did that answer your question? It did, thanks for clearing that up. Yep. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Is there any other questions? Hey Andy, there's a question here on how do you see companies segmenting the different scenarios? Certainly, so thanks Ash. Uh, from the different scenarios, I would say, you know, the typically we see whether it's aggressive, conservative, Midland, 
you know, some of those types of things are, are, are ways to do it, but you can even get it segmented down to different areas. If I'm going to just change uh, from a product, if I'm doing strategic scenario planning, am I just doing a product line review? And I just want to segment that if I'm just going to look at that maybe for a, a six month or a 12 month, I just want to look at what the different influence in, in that, or is it in, in, from a geography? So there are multiple ways to segment it, but typically we see people kind of starting with that, you know, for lack of a better term, high, medium, low, or aggressive, midland, or um, uh, conservative type of view. All right, any other questions? All right, well, hearing none, uh, we will be back next week and we will tell uh, everybody what that, uh, I'm gonna be coming up with a schedule of what this is. So hopefully you can, uh, you know, dial in. But the different thing that I want to uh, leave you all with is that one of the great tools that Axolytics offers is a free supply chain assessment or an assessment of what your current business process are. And so we evaluate your tools, your processes and provide you basically a technology agnostic review that can be used to help guide your next step, to help guide this transformation, to help you overcome any type of disruptions that are coming along. And I will just tell you that you can look and see more about that at our website here at www.axolytics.com. Feel free to email me at abrisley at axolytics.com or go ahead and uh, send me a LinkedIn uh, request and we can have a discussion through LinkedIn. And I look forward to talking more about this in the weeks to come. Thank you all very much for your time today.